trickier looking logarithmic equation. I'd like to write this down. Log 3 x minus 7 minus a half log 3x is 1 minus log 3 2. Copy this down, pause the video and have a go. Let's see how you get on. Right, so let's see. I can see I've got two, quite a few logs here. 1, 2, 3. To start with, let's combine these logs together. They're being subtracted, so let's use the division law for logs. There's no coefficient there, but there is here, so I'm going to have to pop that up. So let's do that first. Let's do log 3 x minus 7 minus log 3 x to the half. The right-hand side I will leave alone. Now we can combine them. They're subtracted. The coefficients are 1, so we divide. Log 3 x minus 7 divided by x to the half is 1 minus log 3, 2. What I'd recommend to do is to combine all the logs. You can, we've combined two of them together, but now let's bring in the other one. This minus, let's bring it to the other side so it'll become plus. So you've got log 3 of all of this stuff plus log 3, 2 is equal to 1. And now we're adding logs, again, with coefficients of 1. So we can go straight into the log law and multiply. So we multiply this by 2, so the 2 will just multiply with the top. So this becomes log 3. I'll just multiply it straight away. Remember to multiply by both terms on the top. Is equal to 1. Now, remember what I said, when you have a single logarithm, now is the time to activate the definition of the log. What does this really mean? It means 3 to this power, well, 3 to the power of 1 is easy, it's just 3, is equal to this. So we end up with 3 is equal to 2x minus 14 over x to the half. Right, the logs have gone. So we just need to solve this equation. Let's bring the x to the half up. So I've got 2x minus 14 is 3x to the half. Now, how are we going to solve an equation like this? You've got two options. Let me show you both options. So I'll do one option here and another option over there. So the first thing you can do is bring the 3x to the half to one side. So you end up with 2x minus 3x to the half minus 14 is equal to 0. And then you can treat it as if it's a quadratic. How can we treat it as if it's a quadratic? Because the power of x here is power 1. That power is double that power. If you've got two terms when one power is double the other, it's really a quadratic in disguise. So if you set a substitution, if you say u is equal to x to the half, because that power is double, that's effectively u squared. If you square both sides, that becomes x. So this effectively becomes 2u squared minus 3u minus 14. You get two solutions. u is 7 over 2 and minus 2. Right, but we are not finished. Those are u values. So remember, u is just a random letter that I use for the substitution. So Ultimately, I'm looking for x, so now put both values back in. So that means 7 over 2 is x to the half. Remember, what is x to the half? It's square root x. How do I get rid of the square root? I need to square. So you don't square root that. You have to, you have to undo the power of the half. Undoing a square root is squaring. Therefore, from this value here, we get 49 over 4. That's one answer. Minus 2 would also be put back in, is x to the half, square minus 2, and you get 4. So we get two answers. Now, I promise you to do it another way. If we do it another way, we should get the same answers, otherwise something has gone wrong. So instead of bringing this across, what we could do is as follows. What do we not like about this equation? It's the x to the power of a half. So... 
What is x to the power of half? It's a square root. So it sounds like if I square both sides, then that problem will go away. So let's see. If I square this side, remember, you've got to square the whole thing. You can't square each of them separately. You square the whole thing and square the whole thing. If I square the whole thing, it goes in a bracket. 2x minus 4 all squared. Squaring this side, 3 gets squared easily. It's 9. x to the half is square root x. If you square it, the square root and the squared cancel. So that just becomes x. And now we have a regular quadratic. Let's multiply this out. We have 4x squared minus 14 times 2 is 28, but there's two of those terms, so that becomes 56. 14, or minus 14, the squared is 196, is equal to 9x. Bring the 9x across, and you get 4x squared minus 65x plus 196 is equal to 0. Now solve that quadratic. And if you solve it, you get exactly the same answers, 49 over 4, or 4. Now, with a logarithmic equation, when you get your answers, you must not move on to the next question. Why? I've said in a previous video, you need to check that those answers make sense. Our original equation was this. What we've got is, at the moment, potential. Potential answers of 49 over 4 and 4. So, if one, at least one term of the log is negative inside the log, that means that solution does not work, because it gives us a math error, we said, it gives us a term that doesn't actually make mathematical sense. So let's have a look. Now this term here, log 3x, if the x's are positive and they go into log 3x, that's no problem. So I'm not bothered about this term. This term will work for any positive values. It wouldn't if they were negative, they're both positive, that's not a problem. But what about this? Well, 49 over 4, if I put that in there, that's bigger than 7. Remember, 28 over 4 is 7, so 49 over 4 is definitely bigger than 7. If you subtract 7, if that goes in there, that's no problem. That's, that, that's the inside of the log is positive. We said that's positive. That's fine. So that solution is valid. 49 over 4 is valid. However, when we put 4 in, it ends up being minus 3. So a positive answer can be a problem, because it, it, in this example, it makes the inside of that log negative. Therefore, 4 is not an answer. It is not a valid solution. So you will lose a mark unless you finally say that the solution is 49 over 4. You need, need to make it clear only. Only 49 over 4.